Coming up on today's episode, Robert reviews the Panasonic BDP85. Should this Blu-ray player be on your short list? We got the top five Robert Downey Jr. movies in HD. Do wireless speakers really work for home theater? And of course, the Blu-ray releases for the week of May 18th, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Verizon Droid Apps, Squarespace, and Netflix. Hey, welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, over the air. If it is in HD, we like it. Yeah. Hey, do you feel like everybody has an HD TV these days? Uh, not quite. The CEA just announced that 65% of U.S. households now own an HD TV. 86% of U.S. households own a computer. That's, a, that's the third most owned CE consumer electronics product after televisions and DVD players. Uh, that HDTV number is up from, damn, 13% of households only a year ago. Another 23% of the folks in the study said that they plan to buy an HDTV in the next 12 months, while the average household now has 1.8 HDTVs, and that's up from 1.5 a year ago. <laughs> I think all of this really would help explain how Patrick keeps finding Blu-ray discs on sale at the rural 7-Eleven stores. Right next to the, you know where you usually <laughs> Wherever see Wherever like, you find them on sale, buy them. I, I know, buy they're like 11 price. bucks. Just, just wander around to the 7-Eleven when you're in the middle of nowhere, and look, right next to the giant candy rack is a rack of Blu-rays. I was filling out my uh, awesome. Arnold Schwarzenegger library of Blu-rays <laughs> on Amazon. They had like the, right. what, what can I get for under 10 bucks? It's like, oh yeah, that one. No, no. I ended up buying a second copy of Total Recall though. I just, I wanted. I wanted you love that movie so much. I, I didn't want that one though. I wanted <laughs> Running Man and I ended up buying Total Recall on accident. And then I went in my library and I'm like, I already had. Oh, it's just Total Recall? A big cluster F. Uh, <laughs> you just want to see the ice hockey scene in the Running Man. And I the like timing Richard. on those one liners by our governor. <sighs> it's Richard Dawson. He, he makes Running Man. For he me, does so. make Running Man. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> look, I hope you didn't download a pirated copy of the Academy Award-winning *The Hurt Locker*. The Hollywood Reporter says that the producers are quote preparing a lot massive. Excuse me, not just preparing a lawsuit, a massive lawsuit against thousands of individuals who pirated the film online. Lawyers working on the project claim tens of thousands of individuals will be targeted at least after they file the lawsuit, subpoena ISP records, and start matching out illicit BitTorrent downloads against IP addresses. They uh, added the lawyers said that 75% of the ISPs have contacted have cooperated fully. Those that have resisted are mostly doing so, they say, because of the amount of work involved in handing over thousands of names rather than, say, waiting for legal due process because you got a subpoena before you turn over the stuff. If your name ends up on their list, you can expect to be sent a settlement offer from the U.S. Copyright Group, which was hired by the producers of The Hurt Locker, uh, uh, and then probably a second settlement offer and then probably massive legal ass kicking. The producers of The Hurt Locker are particularly miffed because copies of the movies leaked onto the internet five months before the U.S. release. Not a particularly wide release, I might add. It was never in more than like 535 theaters in the U.S. And then, of course, the downloads went nuts, the BitTorrent. The, the illicit downloading went berserk after the film won six Oscars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Films grossed a total of $16 million in the U.S., $42 million worldwide, and cost $15 million to make. Why, why bother with all this effort and paying all these lawyers all this money to do all this work when they could be just getting the format out there, getting the disc out at lower prices right. to encourage more people to buy it? I just, I think I, hunting pirates is kind of a waste of money, in my mind. It'll be interesting to see what they, if you, maybe they'll make a bunch of money, this will be a new model. Apparently, a lot of it, what, what the, the, the kind of backstory, the hidden agenda inside the Hollywood Reporter story was that a lot of independents are getting hammered, either because their distribution isn't good or they can't get the cost down on the discs, and they're finding a I lot of potential <laughs> viewers are pirating the content rather than the, obtaining it through They'll make meals. better pirates using encrypted BitTorrent clients. Right. And that doesn't even address, like, if you go into any major city, you go into the back store of some right. electronic shop and they've got every disc pirated for seven bucks a pop. And I've been in enough of those stores to go, okay, uh, those people aren't tracked at all. I think it's interesting that the movie made more money worldwide in distribution, basically more money outside the U.S. than inside the U.S., um, given that usually the piracy issues are related more to the rest of the world rather than inside the U.S. I'm an image quality snob, too, so I'm going for the Blu-ray version, which... 
I'm not dealing with 40 gigs of data anywhere. The so. Blu-ray version looks spectacular. If Can't you haven't wait. seen it, rent the Blu-ray version. It's, uh, it's interesting. Now, in the continuing battle between Wi-Fi, gigabit Ethernet, and my desire to stream movies in full high-definition quality without stuttering, the Wi-Fi Alliance and Y-Gig, a.k.a. the Wireless Gigabit Alliance, have teamed up to deliver Y-Gig. Think 60 gigahertz of bandwidth, wireless delivery up to 7 gigabits per second. Nice. Roughly 10 times of what 802.11n tops out at. Now, before you go off wondering, when will this new Y-Gig router appear? The word is 2013 before the technology is pretty much finalized. I think we're going to have probably yeah. draft Y-Gig products and things like that. I think the draft is pretty close. Okay. The, the two competing standards have kind of come together, and they're reaching out to all the major That's good, because I'm now seeing, not a flood, but I'm seeing the, tr the initial trickle of the wireless HD products that are coming out. Funny so, you should mention that. <laughs> in case anybody out there is wondering about that wireless HD alliance, folks at Engadget have a pretty good report that they'll support Ygig with dual mode wireless HD and Ygig silicon, now available from Cybeam. There's that company I was trying to think of. And that the spec has been updated to support 3D HD CP 2.0 and data rates over 10 gigabit. Yeah. Pretty sweet. And if you're looking for something a bit sooner, Amion says that it shipped half a million of its 1080p wireless HD or WHDI chipsets. They claim that the first wireless home digital interface products should be shipping later this year. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And CNET's Crave reports that Amion is having chipsets shipping in volume to Asus, Geffen, Hire, <laughs> LG, Mitsubishi, Philips, Sharp, Sony, and others. And before you get ready to rip out your Ethernet cable, WHDI is for HD video and audio. In other words, eliminating the HDMI cable, not necessarily for video, or not for data transmission, but I see some crossover happening there. Or at least dual compatibility products, definitely. <laughs> Hopefully using that Cybeam chipset, too. Yes. Yes. All speed. Speaking of, yes, Kaleidoscape. Remember them? They're the market leader in movie servers, a.k.a. the really expensive but legal way to archive your DVDs on a server. They've revealed their Blu-ray products, the M300 and the M500. The M500 offers the ability to import Blu-rays, DVDs, and CDs onto your home server. You just need the physical Blu-ray present to play it back from the server to address the concerns of the studios. Sound a little ridiculous? You need the Blu-ray in the player to play back the Blu-ray from your... Server. Server, yeah. Ah. Well, Kaleidoscape's working on a disc loader to keep a large number of discs ready for playback and deliver bulk importing, which is a cool thought. I personally can't see the... <laughs> I just can't wait to see what the, 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 the large disc device costs, given the M500 costs a hefty $4,000, and the playback-only M300 rings up at $2,500. But it can playback movies from the Kaleidoscape server along with the physical discs. Interesting. They're trying. They're trying very hard. They're bringing that price down. <laughs> it's, it's, that server starts at ten grand, though. Keep that in mind. And I built mine for what? A tenth that price? Hmm. hmm. Anyway, fans of PlayOn, the media server software that makes it easy to deliver Hulu, Netflix, YouTube, Amazon VOD, and lots of other online video sources to various boxes around your home, is moving from the flat $19.99 fee to $39.99 with an annual recurring payment of $19.99. Mm. Now, in exchange for the enhanced pricing, enhanced, I like that, <laughs> Media Mall will be bringing Play On Premium content from Comedy Central, the NHL, TV.com, and PBS. But you have until May 20th to buy that $19.99 lifetime license if you don't already own the software. I said they're thinking like PBS, Comedy Central, the NHL. Or is Play On headquartered in Minnesota or is everybody buying Play On in Minnesota? The playoffs are just about over though for the NHL, so uh, I don't know. I'm well, still maybe until next year. Oh, there you go. Maybe they'll have. Well, yeah, they can't. You can get that lifetime license if you want it. Speaking of weird moves, Comcast announced the cable show. They're going to have 11,000 movies on demand. They claim that they'll take their VOD library from 8,500 hours to 70,000 hours. That's the, the number that was quoted by ZatsNotFunny.com. Or given that, I think it's 8,766 hours in a year, roughly eight years of video without repeating a single video. The Gadget HD says 3,000 of those titles are going to be in HD, and that Comcast gets something like 350 million Comcast on-demand views per month, and that, quote, if On Demand was its own channel, it would be the second highest watched channel on Comcast cable. That's not to be confused, by the way, with the online fancast Xfinity TV offering, says Engadget HD, which already has 1,500 movies from cable, 5,500 movies on the site for rent or purchase. And for the new service, the Video On Demand service, Washington and Philly are going to get the expanded VOD services first. 
yeah, I'm sitting there and I'm like, they didn't say they didn't say what the number one channel was, and they also didn't say how many of those seventy thousand hours are going to be soft core pornography. A tip of the Ooh. hat to uh, <laughs> to Thirty Rock for having a hysterical, oh, really? hysterical. Oh. Well, if you haven't seen the episode, I'll I'm not gonna. Out. You'll you'll find it. Excellent. And while I'm waiting for my Seton 4 cable card tuner to show up, rumor has it that the HD Home Run will have a three tuner card for the holidays. Folks at N Gadget are reporting that unlike the Seton cards, which live inside a PC, the new HD Home Run boxes are networked devices that capture video off the cable and then spit it out over gigabit Ethernet connections. And that's at least until we have that Y-Gig technology show up. <laughs> Heck oh my yes. Goodness. Robert's reviewing Panasonic's latest Blu-ray player later in the show. Right now, though, I need to thank one of the sponsors that brings you your weekly fix at HD Nation. Verizon Droid apps, people. They've got access to every tool the phone has, including the compass, the GPS, the accelerometer, the image capture, and for those who love watching their shows on the go, a video player. The power of the Android apps allows them to run in the background for true multitasking support, unlike on some phones. Background alerts and the enhancement of each other's performance. Verizon's dominant network of 3G coverage create an unparalleled mobile data solution to keep you connected to the web and allow you to run heavy data rich features anytime, anywhere. With the ever expanding Android market, you'll always be able to quickly download the apps you need to get the most out of your droid. So if you're looking for some apps to get awesome video playback, don't miss top picks like the Discovery Channel app, TV.com, E! Online, and more, all of which offer the most recent video content right to your droid. Just head on over to DroidDoes.com to find new apps for your Verizon droid. Did we mention bargain Star Trek Blu-rays last week? Well, we found out why they were so cheap. A viewer named Joe wrote in, The Star Trek Blu-rays Best Buy are selling for 10 bucks are the old theatrical versions. They're not the new ones that were released on two-disc SD collector's editions a few years ago. Paramount is well known for double, triple, or more dipping, <laughs> so I have to assume the collector's director's editions are coming soon. On top of that, only Wrath of Khan was properly remastered for Blu-ray. All the others were upconverted. I'll wait for the proper update of these movies on Blu-ray. Signed, Joe. God! <laughs> Thanks for the heads up on that, Joe, and, and my apologies to the Trekkers in the audience. Let's get some top five on. Ah, Robert Downey Jr.'s role in the summer blockbuster Iron Man 2 is certainly cementing his status as a triple A-list Hollywood celebrity. It's pulled over three hundred million in five days at the box office. His most awesome Iron Man and action-packed take on the Sherlock Holmes. The Sherlock Holmes, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Anyhow, those two have already done over a billion worldwide together. We want to show Robert Downey Jr. a little more love this week with our top five Robert Downey Jr. movies in HD. Sure, his work in Steven Schoenberg's biopic of Diane Arbus Fur, awesome, awesome flick. We'll probably a little twisted, but awesome. We'll probably take forever to make it to Blu-ray. Not to mention the Singing Detective, the movie that relaunched his career after he a finally got sober this last time, and b Mel Gibson put up the insurance bond. So he could actually get in the flick because nobody would insure him. In any case, let's talk about what's out there on Blu-ray. One, The Soloist, based on the true story of LA Times columnist Steve Lopez's discovery of a schizophrenic cello prodigy, Nathaniel Ayers. The Soloist chronicles Lopez columns on Ayers while exposing him to the plight of the mentally ill forced to live on the streets of LA. Although not warmly received in the box office, Downey Jr. does a tremendous job of portraying Lopez as a man overwhelmed with the complex issues surrounding mental illness. Paired together with the accomplished Jamie Foxx, dude is a monster actor as Nathaniel Ayers, the soloist is a great example of Downey's acting skill and talent. Two. Tropic Thunder, I think it's hysterical. Our producer Rogers said this uh, Ben Stiller set up of the brooding war movie genre falls flat on its face. Okay, Ben Stiller was awful, I'll agree on that. <laughs> but Robert Downey Jr. was bizarre and peculiar and epic. He's playing an Australian method actor who surgically turns himself into an African American. It's surreal and it's incredibly funny, playing off the character's innate comedic awkwardness with various African-American pop culture references and civil rights slogans, Downey effortlessly makes what could have been an absolute train wreck of a role into a memorable, likable character that ended up being the only reason to watch this movie. Okay, I'll buy into that. Oh, I will say Jack Black was pretty funny, too. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Robert Downey plays a small-time criminal pretending to be a New York actor learning the private investigator thing, played by a rather understated Val Kilmer, or at least understated for a gay P.I. in L.A. who tends to carry guns given to him by his mother. In any case, it's a shame. Chandler-style detective story with a lot of clever humor. If you don't like the back and forth between Kilmer and Dally early on in the movie, you might want to move on to the next flick in your stack. Sherlock Holmes. 
You ever notice how amazing hand-to-hand -hand combat can look in HD? You will after watching Guy Ritchie's take on Sherlock Holmes. This Blu-ray really makes the spectacular set pieces and the costuming work shine too. It is visually stunning, no matter what you think of the particular interpretation on Sherlock Holmes. Iron Man. Awesome. From the opening demo of the Jericho Missile System to the closing press conference, this is a really fun movie. Sure, the closing battle doesn't make a lot of sense and the intricately plotted, well, the plot kind of falls apart two thirds of the way through the movie, but damn, this is a gorgeous flick. We want Stony Stark's house, his toys, and by the way, there is some great acting talent in this movie. Two girls and a guy, probably never been seen by anybody out there except for like five of us who studied film. It was written in four days and filmed in just 11 days in 1997 by James Toback. This is pure writing and acting. It's mostly just Robert Downey Jr., Heather Graham, and Natasha Gregson Wagner in a single room in Lower Manhattan. Two Guys and a Girl was the last flick Downey filmed before going to jail. A lot of exploration of relationships, cheating, and love. Critics are divided on this one, but there's an extraordinary scene where Downey confronts himself in a mirror. It's worth watching. Two flicks we can't believe aren't out in HD yet. Chaplin. Ebert dinged this flick for spending too much time on Chaplin's sex life and almost no time on Chaplin's movies and what made them great. It's a fair call, but he did take pains to point out that Robert Downey Jr. succeeds almost uncannily. This is a quote, by the way. The physical resemblance is convincing, but better is the way Downey captures Chaplin's spirit even in costume as the tramp. It's true. It is a monster piece of acting. I can only wish the plot was as lovingly crafted as the sets and costumes, which would sing in HD. Finally, to end off our list, less than zero an ugly little time capsule of 80s success amongst LA's glittering youth, or I should say drug-fueled youth. Less Than Zero predates Downey's very public battles with addiction. An HD edition would really bring out Downey's spectacularly nuanced facial work. There's a lot of skill going on in that face for somebody so young. Not to mention Andrew McCarthy and the rest of the cast. And I gotta say, Downey's work, people say, this movie led him to drugs? No way. This movie was him opening up about how he felt about his existing, probably, addiction issues. Good stuff. I want to see it on Blu-ray. So does Harry. Aaron, so does Roger. Who knows who else out there does? I want Weird Science on Blu-ray. Where is that? I mean, granted, he's not a, it's not a starring role for him, but he did play one of the heavies in the movie, one of the cool kids, kind of going up against uh, Michael Anthony Hall's character. But I, don't know. I haven't thought about that, that movie. That movie made me forever. laugh a lot as a teenager. But I look—it's a funny flick. Yeah, not as not as so. For nowadays, I have to say, The Hangover gets me giggling like nothing else. But when I was a teenager, man, Weird Science. Good stuff. <laughs> anyway, it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of May 18th, 2010. First up, Invictus, starring Morgan Freeman and Matt Damon and directed by Clint Eastwood. This 2009 film is based on the real-life events about the 1995 Rugby World Cup. Morgan Freeman plays Nelson Mandela, who tries to unite his country in the wake of South African apartheid, bringing everyone together to cheer for the home team. Extras on the disc, exclusive to the Blu-ray release, are clips from the documentary, The Eastwood Factor, plus Mandela meets Morgan, and even a picture-in-picture -picture exploration with the cast, crew, and the real people who live this true story. Next up, 2009's The Messenger, starring Woody Harrelson and Ben Foster. This film tells the story of a U.S. Army officer who is assigned to casualty notification duty. Now it's his job to deliver the bad news to the families of the fallen soldiers, and things take a turn when he starts to bond with one of the new widows. Extras on this disc include behind the scenes footage, a Q&A with the cast and crew, and a documentary about the notification process. Next up, to lighten the mood, we have The Spy Next Door. It stars Jackie Chan as a former CIA super spy who decides to settle down with his girlfriend. Unfortunately, taking care of her three kids isn't as easy as it seems. Also starring Billy Ray Cyrus and George Lopez, this isn't the most artsy film out there, but if you want to hear someone say, spying is easy, babysitting is hard, or watch someone feed bacon to a pig, this is the flick for you. Carlito's Way is a bit grittier. Uh, Patrick, you had a chance to watch this one, right? Yeah, it, it's a little, it's a, it's a twitch grittier. This is Brian De Palma's recovery after his epic bomb, Bonfire of the Vanities. Carlito's Way is a gangster flick set in New York City in 1975. Al Pacino as Carlito Brigante and Sean Penn is his absolutely whacked nut job lawyer, Sean Penn. It's just Sean Penn's over the top. It's an amazing performance. This movie features an awesome chase scene and signs of all the Dutch camera work that would work so well for De Palma in Mission Impossible. The 1080p transfer captures the color of the 70s quite well. There's a lot of soft shooting in here, so there might not be as much detail as you expect, but still a lot more than the DVDs. Look for the cuffs on uh, Sean Penn's Psycho Lawyer, and the 5.1 soundtrack works especially well in the oh-so-many nightclub scenes. A lot of, lot of time in nightclubs doing a lot of naughty stuff. Excellent. A lot of nightclub scenes. Other releases this week <laughs> include Extraordinary Measures, The New Daughter, 2008's Outlander, 2010's Valentine's Day, 
and the Criterion Collection's Walkabout. Oh, and a quick heads up if you're having trouble finding the new Saving Private Ryan Blu-ray on shelves, Paramount recalled it after finding a sync glitch with the audio. They're reissuing the disc and putting it back on the shelves May 18th. So if you have one of the discs with a glitch, there's a number you can call. Do a quick search on highdefdisknews.com to find it. Now it's time to thank one of our sponsors. With more than 12 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, streaming movies and TV episodes over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. This week I'm testing a new Blu-ray player that features Netflix streaming, so I queued up my favorite Joss Whedon TV series, Firefly, in excellent widescreen quality. For $8.99 a month, the Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streamed to their TVs and computers and can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to their homes. With Netflix, there are never any due dates or late fees. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among the large and expanding base of devices that can stream movies and TV episodes from Netflix right to members' TVs are Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PS3, and the Nintendo Wii console. Find movies you love easily. You can browse, search, or see Netflix's recommendations for you. They even have a special back-of-box feature that lets you get the details of any movie instantly. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you get Blu-ray movies in the mail in about one business day. Shipping is free and there are no late fees or due dates. Blu-ray plans start at just $5.99 a month. As a new member and HD Nation viewer, you can get a free Netflix trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash hdnation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. Looking for 7.1 support and Wi-Fi on your next Blu-ray player? Mr. Heron's got a new Panasonic player that might be looking for a spot on your short list. Yeah. Let me introduce you to the Panasonic DMP BD85P in the beautiful gloss black color. The scheme. heavy uh, gloss black color. I'm telling you, what player isn't really? Uh, $250 <laughs> online retail price or from the, direct from the Samsung website. The main features of this player, it supports analog output. So if you have an older AVR that has analog inputs, but you still want full fidelity sound with all the latest lossless formats, 5.1 and 7.1 support are built right into the back of the player, so you can just hook up all those cables and go crazy. It also has, <laughs> as do most uh, Panasonic products, an SD card slot, so you can easily view your pictures and music on that as well. Nice. Now, this is not a 3D compatible version of a product. They have two other models that are steps up if you need 3D output. And it does include, in the box, I have to admit, a pretty nice feature, a USB ABGN Wi-Fi adapter, which is great. Uh, I looked up the price separately for just the adapter. They went about $80 to $100 for that online. Wow. So it's nice that it actually comes in the box for the $250 price tag. Online features, uh, this supports the Ericast. That's Panasonic's word for their internet-enabled features that include Picasa, Netflix, Amazon, stuff you see up behind me on the screen, Amazon Video On Demand. But one thing missing that a lot of people are a little irked about, no music services yet. There is that no box, Pandora? though. There is a coming soon box in the corner that people are hoping Pandora is going to sneak in there Pandora soon. Pandora had deals with everybody in the planet. I, they're, <laughs> apparently, they're not. They're, they're in discussions with the You Panasonic. can play, like, MP3s off a home server or off a, your SD card, though, right? Uh, off the SD card, yes. Okay. Uh, network streaming support is not built into this player. Oh, really? So that's something else to keep in mind, too. So no streaming movies, no streaming audio? Uh, no. Oh, from your home server, no. From okay. the online services, yeah, you can. Good to know. Uh, we were talking about... Uh, 24p output, I think a couple weeks ago. This supports 24p output with DVDs. So you can actually go in while the DVD is playing, go into its video setup menu, and say, you know what? You're doing an up conversion to 1080p for, say, this particular TV. Quit it. But you, no, you say you want that up conversion, but say you wanted to say the movie on a DVD disc was recorded, originally captured at 24 frames per second. So why not output it from the DVD player at 24 frames per second, which a lot of players don't do. I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. Panasonic does, but they continue to hide this feature in a menu that's very inaccessible and it resets itself every time you eject the disc. So I'm putting that almost in the useless category, but it, it's there and I, I do like it. Last week we were also talking about, or last week's show we were talking about color quality and different differences in different Blu-ray players when you talk about output quality. Excellent color decoding. I ran every benchmark I had through this player and they mm -hmm. came up spotless. And in terms of picture controls, uh, it was great because I felt the default settings we're giving you the full picture, but it had presets like cinema and custom modes that allowed you to get full detail range out of all your movies and discs. Bottom line, really, is that I think for the $250 price tag, it's a great value for a Wi-Fi-enabled Blu-ray disc player that also provides up to 7.1 analog output. 
those two features alone could really cover a lot of bases for a lot of people. And it does have an Ethernet jack, too. <laughs> that, oh, always, always. And it, because of those two features and the Wi-Fi enabled, it, it'll automatically do your firmware updates for you. There's a feature oh, in there. Nice. It's, it's set by default to automatically check. Of course, I had to just go in there and manually hammer on it to see if there was an update. This one was already updated when I got it. But that kind of that kind of usability, I think, just goes further to making it easier for people to use a product like that. Why do you think they don't support streaming video? I mean, don't most of the upper end Sony and Samsung and LG Blu-ray players do that? I, I, I don't know why they don't. It, I'd be curious to see if the new 3D players are offering that feature. I have to go and check on that. It wouldn't take a lot for them to add that feature right. in. It's just a matter of getting the right code and getting it to the player and making sure it's not going to break anything else. So, it, it's not like that. Ooh. Fancy. And <laughs> I will say Netflix support, it was great. I tried a few shows last night, up to HD quality, nice. uh, Netflix HD quality. So uh, that worked great. Picasso support, like I mentioned, in YouTube. And uh, I don't use video on demand from Amazon much, but that's there too. So cool. overall, that so, bottom line, again, it's really uh, thumbs up. Just strictly for including Wi-Fi at mm -hmm. $250 and the analog output for the people who might not have the latest and greatest AV hardware or they want to keep what they have but support analog audio output. So the top customers for this is people who desperately want wireless on their Blu-ray player. Included. And, and people who already have a 7.1 amplifier but maybe don't have a receiver or a decoding for that. Totally. Hmm. And excellent, excellent overall picture quality in terms of color detail and picture detail. So if you're gonna blow this picture up to 55 inch screens and beyond, uh, I'd put it on my short list. All right. Coming up, we got viewer questions and an example of one amazing home theater built by one of our viewers out there. Right now, though, we got to thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace. It's a publishing system. It's a hosting system. What's that mean? You build websites with it, and there's no coding required. You can get behind the scenes in that HTML if you're into that. But quite frankly, this is about making it easy for anyone to build an amazing website. And they also make it easy to move your existing website over to squarespace.com. They support WordPress, Blogger, TypePad, movable type imports. They'll grab your posts, your comments, your tags, your authors, and media with one simple import tool. And it saves the URL structure of your existing site and creates mappings for every single one of your old posts automatically. So your links will all still work. And this is painfully easy to use. A moron like me can build a good looking website. Now we got a promo code for you. Squarespace does things a little bit differently. Rather than using the promo code when you first come to the website, they let you sign up, check things out, play with it for a couple of weeks, and then they ask you to pay for it. Basically whip out your credit card and go away. Now if you use the code HDNATION, you're going to score 10% off the lifetime of your order. Check it out. It's painless, painless, painless website building and hosting. And if you use an HDNATION promo code, you get 10% off your order and you help keep HDNATION on the air. Check it out people, squarespace.com. We got this email from Adam and he writes, Hey, Robert and Patrick, I enjoy the show and I catch it at the gym every week on my iPhone. What I'm wondering is the following. One, are there any amazing sounding standalone 5.1 speaker sets that I can hook up to my Pioneer receiver that include wireless rear speakers? I see a lot of home theater in a box with wireless rear speakers, but not standalone sets. I would also like to know if these standalone wireless sets are okay in terms of not picking up interference from Wi-Fi, cell phones, etc. Signed, Adam. All right, Adam, I gotta say, I generally prefer wires to wireless. There's no compression, no transition, and minimal weirdness from, say, cab radios going by screaming out you know weird call requests in, in any case you said you don't necessarily need a specific set of wireless rear speakers you might want to consider keeping the speakers you already have or buying whatever set of speakers you want and getting a wireless rear speaker adapter check out the Rocketfish Universal Wireless Rear Speaker Kit it's around a hundred bucks it's from a house brand at Best Buy Rocketfish is a house brand at Best Buy it's cheap it includes dual 25 watt amps and according to the reviewers over at CNET who got hands on with it it sounds pretty good Downside, there's no remote control option, so you need to toggle them off and on manually. And you cannot turn off the delay for these speakers, so the CNET folks said they can sound too echoey. And by the way, they pretty much wanted to turn turned off when listening to stereo programming because there were buzz and hiss issues there that were not noticeable when they were in full 5.1 surround sound. Sound pretty negative? Well, it might be manageable given the $600 price tag for KEF's universal wireless system, which is pretty much the gold standard for wireless surround, assuming a receiver manufacturer doesn't have a kit. It also might be worth checking out the $250 Bose SL2 wireless surround link. As far as I understand, it's not locked down to Bose receivers. That means if it offers their usual clean audio, it could be a winner in a nice sort of in-between prices. I really would not recommend going with full 5.1 wireless sound. You're just 
just going to compromise too much of the audio going to your front and center channel speakers. Is there anything that runs that audio signal from your AVR, say, through your home wiring, like your power wiring? Not that I've seen yet. And you could just plug it into the wall, maybe. There's probably Not, some issue there. Yeah, I'd like we, to search around for something like that. It's well, it's funny. My issue with wireless, whether or for that matter, for for writing anything over wireless, isn't too bad. It's really interesting. They, it's possible, but I think you would pick up if it's analog. You're going to pick up noise from the um, from the power line transmission, Good unless point. you convert it into a digital, digital format, format and run it over IP and convert it again. But then you end up usually with compression artifacts. I use the wireless rear channels in a home theater in a box kit I have at home are actually mm -hmm. driven through uh, infrared. There's an infrared really? transmitter, and then it hits the rear hits the rear channels that so are powered little, by the wall. If somebody walks between them, do they? It's I keep it right against the wall, mm -hmm. so it's shooting basically just parallel to the wall. But if I do stick my hand out there, it will turn it right off. So yeah, it's kind of fun, and it glows that beautiful little red in the corner. But it, it, convenience is there, and yeah. I don't notice any of the hiss or any of the. There's no artifacting that I can mm -hmm. tell when I'm listening to say 5.1. Uh, pseudo surround on right. stereo feeds from broadcast television. That's a good thing. And most so. of the time, I think people notice it when there's nothing going on for the rear channels. I got to say, I prefer either running flat cable under the carpet or an area rug. Yeah. Or I'm lucky in the house I'm in now, the garage is underneath the living room, so I can just drill some holes and run some very long cable. Remodeling. Dear Patrick and Robert, hi guys. I love the show. Thanks. I love my TiVo HD, but I'd like to supplement it with something that offers more robust internet video support. Ideally, I'd like an inexpensive, say less than $150 box that provides a full featured browser so I can view videos from website. I've been thinking about purchasing either the Boxy Box or the Pop Box. I know that you've reviewed both of these products individually, but how do they compare to one another? Are there any other products in this price range you would recommend? I appreciate your input. Keep up the good work. We'll do our best. Rick in Denver, Colorado. Uh, actually, we touched on two products, or both products, yeah. briefly at CES. We haven't done full reviews because neither one is actually shipping yet. Yeah. Uh, I, I We've also got like 20 minutes with both products that's true. together. Which one? The pop box. Oh, oh, and the boxy box. And the boxy box. Will you be able to watch any video on the internet, though, with those products, like flash video or. That's the tough part, the, really. I think flash support will be in both of them. They're both using the new in, in, in NVIDIA. <laughs> They're using the, in te, the, Tegra, the NVIDIA's Tegra chipset. Oh, okay. So they have some powerful graphics processing. The drivers are in place for the GPU inside the chipset, really tiny chipset to accelerate that. Um, and I got to say, though, they're thinking more living room than desktop. Both boxes, you know, I, I, this is my international lean back environment, which is living room, rather than lean forward environment, which is computer. Both boxes are built around interfaces. The whole point of both boxes are to give showcase interfaces that are designed to be easy to operate with a remote control. That's a lot friendlier to most people than, say, the browser window you're looking for. Eh, frankly, if, if you really want a browser, I'm thinking sal salvage an old machine and turn it into a home theater PC? Totally. Or, um, or perhaps pick up one of those Asus or uh, the Asus EEE -E -E PC is a nice little slab PC. for about 350 right. bucks. That's a full Windows 7 computer with HDMI output and built-in wireless. And I want to say that Oh, there's another company that makes another one of those thin devices, too, that's escaping me at the moment. And you have uh, full-featured boxes, too, like we right. looked at from Puget Sound. And ASRock also right. has some home theater pre-built boxes. And, of course, you can go back a few episodes and look at when we showed off me building that home theater box, or home theater PC. Right. You can always do it yourself. So $150, though, is going to be tough. Yeah. I'm almost positive both the pop box and the boxy box are coming in more than that. I, I could have sworn, look, we're going to have reviews of both of them as soon as we can get our hands on them. They're just not available. And if somebody does have a $150 does. solution, email us. Do it. HDNation at revision3.com. <laughs> hey, we also asked you for pics of your home theaters. And check this one out from Jason in Seattle. He writes, just watched your episode number 44 with the Million Dollar Home Theaters and Patrick's invitation to send in emails with your own viewers theaters on much more modest budgets. I built my home theater a, a few years back by myself. Well, save a little help from the drywall pros. You always need that. And an electrician. Yeah. That turned out <laughs> amazingly well on a meager, me, meager budget by comparison. Uh, here's a full description of it. It's basically a cinemascope, 235 to 128 inch screen. Wow. He's using an anamorphic lens attached to a BenQ W5000 1080p DLP projector. Nice. The room also features two rows of seating, butt kicker transducers installed into the seating. Nice. Yes. And a lot of custom home theater PC automation. Movies and music are stored on a two terabyte NAS or playback via BD-ROM. 
My theater has been profiled in Electronic House Magazine's website in the DIY column and soon will be featured in a hardcover book of the same category. Big thanks to all the wonderful people on AVS Forum for helping me build, my, uh, build up my knowledge and motivation to tackle this project. Now, get this, total cost including all room construction and equipment clocks in at around the $20,000 $25,000 mark and hopefully no need to upgrade for a little while now. Cheers, signed Jason from Seattle. That's a good looking home theater. Still a little, little slick. out of my reach. Slick though, but, it, it, just but that's a lot you. better than 50,000. Totally, for about half the budget we were shown, or, or a quarter of the budget, or less, <laughs> less than that of the budget we were shown for the theaters last week. There's, there's something to get, get your taste buds, uh, I guess, tempted into what you can do. We got more. If you haven't seen Electronic House every year picks the most amazing home theaters that are out there. They put them in price categories that go from like, I don't know, 50,000 up to 250,000 plus. We had a, a few of those in episode 44. We got links to the website. We want to see your home theater setups. Email them to us, hdnation at revision3.com. By the way, if you haven't heard it, we have teamed up with Miso. Like the soup, if you're familiar with Foursquare, the concept is pretty much the same, except for checking into locations, you actually check into log and share media that you're watching. So if you're a fan of HD Nation, check out Miso on the iPhone to unlock exclusive HD Nation badges and win special prizes. Go to GoMiso.com to download Miso, Miso, and start checking in. It's a lot of miso. Mm, miso. Mm. Get the sushi rolling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think, so send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. If you haven't, be sure to catch us on YouTube. You can find our channel at youtube.com slash techhd, and you can find links regarding everything we've talked about on today's show in the show notes. Those are up on each episode page at hdnation.tv. you also find all the links to subscribe to the show, so if you're not getting the latest episode of HD Nation delivered to your doorstep, <laughs> what are you waiting for? That's right. Do us a favor, people. Subscribe, watch, and tell your friends. Until next time. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Robert Heron. I'm Patrick Norton. We'll see you next week on HD Nation. <laughs>